All right, let's keep going with a little more factoring review. Um, you can just never get enough factoring review. It's extremely good. Um, so we did uh, the sort of original factoring by grouping technique. We looked at what would happen in a quadratic where you have uh, only sort of three terms, right? AX squared plus BX plus C. Um, I want to do a couple sort of special cases. Um, and so my sort of special case number one is um, quadratic AX squared plus BX plus C where A is one. So that is where you, you have uh, you know, just sort of one is your coefficient on the first term. So for example, maybe your polynomial looks like x squared plus 9x plus 8. So we never really write it, right? But in theory, this is 1x squared plus 9x plus 8. Um, so the a value here is going to be 1. Now, we can do the exact same steps and the exact same process that we were just doing, right? So my A here is positive one, B is now nine, C is positive eight. Everything here is positive, um, which is fine. Is that better or worse? Uh, who's to say? Um, it just is, it's happening. That's what's happening. So let's just kind of approach this the exact same way that we did the last one. Um, and as we go through it, we can maybe look and sort of think about, are there maybe some shortcuts we can take? This is, to a certain extent, just a simpler setup, right? There's just kind of one fewer number. I mean, not that one is not a number, but like you could imagine one is maybe not going to have as much of an impact uh, as another number here. Um, so let's see what that kind of means uh, for the factoring process. So our a times c is 1 times 8 is 8. So we have to multiply to positive 8. Uh, our b value here is positive 9. So we need to add to 9. This sort of box setup is not terrible. I wish I had written it this way before. So what are the possible factor pairs? How do we multiply and get to 8, positive 8 in particular? Um, uh, I guess like 2 and 4 maybe would be what you might think of first, positive 2 and positive 4. Um, one thing that's a little bit less obvious is that if we're going to multiply to positive 8, we actually also need to consider the possibility that we have two negatives, a negative 2 and a negative 4, right? That would also work. Um, 2 and 4, what's the other option? 1 and 8, I guess, is really it. There's not a ton of things to work with here and then the sort of negative pair, negative one and negative eight. Um, once we hit a pair that works, then we're done. Um, so hopefully we hit it sooner rather than later. If we're gonna add them up, again, I'm sure you're hollering at your screens, pointing uh, uh, desperately to try to tell me uh, you know the answer already without me going through this. And yet, uh, I'm in charge of the video. So we're just gonna go through all of them. Two plus four is six, that's a no-go. Right, six is not the same number as nine. Negative two plus negative four is negative six. This is brutal, you know the answer already. Why are you making me do this? Positive one plus positive eight is the pair. That's the good one, right? And the idea is we only need um, one of these to work, right? I don't even need to bother checking negative one or negative eight it would get me negative 9. I know it's not going to work, um, but I don't even need to think about it as long as I have one that works uh, and we're sort of assuming we didn't screw up our addition somehow. So what does this mean for the factoring process? Well, we'll go through the same steps we were doing before. So let's rewrite the original, right? So we started with x squared plus 9x plus 8 and what we're going to do is rewrite that middle term. So using 
the pair we just found. So using this uh, 1 and the 8. So this is x squared. I guess we'll call this so plus 1x. I'm just going to write it as plus x. Hopefully that's fine. So 1x and 8x, right? It's just x plus 8x. Um, and then I have on the end plus 8. There's some like extremely uh, obvious pairing happening here. This is a little bit of a coincidence. Uh, I could have again flipped the order here. This just was how I happened to write it on this day. Um, GCFs. Um, so x squared and x. There's literally no numbers here, I guess, besides the implied number one. Um, so x comes out. What I'm left with on the inside is so x squared is x times x. So one x left over. If I take x out of here, what's left over is plus one, right? The sort of invisible coefficient. Um, this isn't a subtraction. This is a division. So if I do x and I divide x away from it, I'm left with one. Also thinking about if I remultiplied and distributed. I need to make sure I end up exactly where I started. Um, the third and fourth terms, obviously 8 and 8. Uh, 8 is, in fact, great. And it factors out from this great polynomial. So I'm left with x. 8 comes out. If I take 8 out of 8, I'm left with positive 1. Uh, and so to finish this off, right, what are we left with? Well, I'm left with. So my two GCFs out in front, x plus 8 in parentheses. And then my common term in parentheses, x plus 1, right? So this is x plus 8 times x plus 1. And that's our factored version. Now. Where are there shortcuts here? Where are there, are there uh, possibilities for us to maybe shave off a few steps? Um, again, this only works when the a coefficient is 1. Never do this uh, if the a is 2 or 3 or 4 or any number that's not positive 1. But if it's positive 1, what you're probably going to notice here is when I did a times c, if I do 1 times 8, I just get 8, right? I'm just getting the c value here. So I'm really just factoring this c term, factoring the 8, and then trying to find a pair that multiplies to 8 and adds up to the 9. In that case, right, you can kind of visualize it maybe even a little bit faster. Obviously, like 1 and 8 multiply to 8, 1 plus 8 adds to 9, and we're good to go. So in theory, then you could go to this middle step where you're breaking these guys apart, um, go through the process, factor, factor, right? You can just sort of shorten a little bit how long it takes to get those pairs. You can kind of ignore the A value and just focus on the B and the C. The other thing you might have noticed is that, well, the factored version here, right, the version that we end up with is just those same numbers, right? 1 and 8, positive 1 and positive 8. I end up with x plus 8 and x plus 1. So my factored version here that I end up with in the end is based entirely on the pair that I found here. Um, and to a certain extent, you would say, well, could I just sort of jump right from this to the end? If, if I kind of go through this stuff, but I just get the 8 and the 1 anyway, um, do I need to sort of jump through all these other hoops? And I will say, in this case, and only in this case, again, when the a value is 1, you can make that jump. That's OK. This is, this is sort of skipping some steps. But let me show you a sort of shortened uh, version of this using another example. Let's center this a little better. Clear off my workspace. Um, what should we do? So obviously. A is 1. So x squared is our term here. Let's do a little positive negative action. So how about x squared? What could we do? Maybe minus 4x. Uh, I always plan out your examples beforehand. Uh, don't necessarily try to do it on the fly. 
Uh, what do I want? Let's do... about negative uh, 12. So x squared minus 4x and minus 12. Okay, so the idea here, right, is a is 1, that's great, b is negative 4, c is negative 12. So what I really need here, if the a value is 1, I'm just kind of focusing on the negative 4 and the negative 12. I need to multiply to negative 12 and I need to add to negative 4. Um, this is an accident, but we actually did this pair already, right? Um, I'll jump right to it just to save us a little time. What's going to do this? It's 2 and 6. I need it to be negative and negative, so 1 positive, 1 negative. This has to be negative, so I need a negative 6 and a positive 2, right? Multiply it together is negative 12. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Obviously, there's other things to check, um, but I'll leave that to you guys to sort of verify. So negative 6 and positive 2. So the idea here, to sort of save the most amount of time possible, is if I've got x squared minus 4x minus 12. Again, in theory, I could break it down. I could sort of go through the whole thing. I could rewrite this sort of middle term, minus 6x plus 2x, right, minus 12. Um, but if I know this is 1, I know in theory I should just end up with negative 6 and positive 2 in my final version. So you can kind of jump right to that, x minus 6 and x plus 2. So again, I can't emphasize enough, this only works when your a term is 1. But if that's 1, you're really just looking at c, trying to factor it down, see if you can add to whatever that middle term is, the b term, and then the factoring just becomes x and x with those two pairs, so in this case minus 6 plus 2. If you foil it out, if you multiply it out, you can kind of verify that's true. If you expanded it out and did factoring by grouping, you can verify that this works. That stuff is all fine. Um, so this is kind of a special case. You can totally ignore this if you want. Uh, if you want to just sort of always and forever, like just go through all these steps, that's totally fine. It works. It's a strategy that is always going to work. It just means that, you know, potentially if you have uh, something that's a little bit more of a trivial example, right, where the a value there is 1, it, you know, maybe has some extra steps um, in a pinch. If you want to save a little time and you can kind of catch the pattern, you can use this shorter version, factoring kind of straight from the pair to your, like, factored version here. So that works too. Um, we'll do one last factoring video with uh, just a couple more special cases.